On today's episode, we're going to jump into some of this very unfortunate injury news that has been breaking. It's a big time waiver show. Lots, lots and lots of situations that we got to analyze. Make sure you subscribe to this channel right now. Leave us some comments and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the podcast. It's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't be nasty. It's me, your boy, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright, joined by Jay Grizz, the Cardboard Bear Extraordinaire. And to my right, the shell of a man. There is there is nothing left inside. This is he, a solo is, show, our first solo show. Mike, you will be saying all of the words from here on out. There was a lot of injury news that got blasted out this morning. None of it good for... Jason Moore. <laughs> None of it neutral. Why did it have to be all of my guys? Why? I mean, look, n- none of it good for the those players and for fantasy football players and those teams. But we make it very personal. And the, the two big injuries are both on Jason's team. We will uh, certainly get into that. Hey, before we get into the, oh, the recap of that oh. Monday night game, what a game we got. Prime time. They gave us their best. Look, football started being great for me last night <laughs> and just kept on this morning. What a great game this is. It is your last chance. There is a signed Christian McCaffrey jersey. We are giving it away at footclangiveaway.com. Just all you do is you go to that website, do a couple things to help the show. Everything there is free. And look, a Christian McCaffrey jersey. Follow us on social media, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. The social team is doing some serious work. Shout out to the Rapscallion handling those things back down there, giving us them, them good, uh, the good Gramps. Uh, what, what do people? No, that was perfect. Good what do, do people? Are you gramming? What do people call that? I think they're just toast, post. But I mean, gramming sounds a lot better. Maybe we should make that a thing. It also just highlights how dumb it was to change. Like it's a tweet. Right. Right. Well, that's not. <laughs> yeah, I, I know but it's it not, was. But it's it like, had its own brand. But it's like I know what a tweet is. I, we're, at, Instagram's been around forever. We don't. What's that called? A post? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, follow us on there. Really good stuff. Or follow us on Twitter X at the FF Ballers at Andy Holloway. You can find Jason. I don't know if he's tweeted anything today at Jason FFL. I am at you FF can Hitman. Find me six feet under the ground if you want to go digging. That's where you'll find me. <laughs> All right, before we get into that, the Monday Night Football game, the Green Bay Packers, 13 points, the Las Vegas Raiders, 17 points, just an absolute screaming fart fest from both teams. Jordan Love looks like he was fully exposed and uh, teams know how to beat him now. I mean, it's just one, it's one game, but it's the Raiders defense, yeah. and this is a defense that you want to target. Jordan Love barely completed more than 50% of his passes through three interceptions, 182 yards, no touchdowns. Really, all of his production came on a close your eyes and pray and throw the ball up to Christian Watson and then Watson. Which should have been a beautiful bomb touchdown. Right, but the pass was so-so. But it, So Watson ends up with 91 yards. Everyone else on this team, including Romeo Dobbs, who had one catch for four yards, Jaden Reed had one catch for seven yards. Musgrave was the only valuable pass catcher for Green Bay. He had 34 yards on six catches. So you, look, that's not the worst. And then, because people are no longer playing him, he's on multiple waiver wires. Of course, A.J. Dillon finally gets volume and has himself an okay day, 76 yards on the ground and a touchdown. I think there was a, a a swath of people that started him because of what happened with the late, Possible. somewhat unexpected Aaron Jones uh, inactive. It was you know we knew he was struggling with the injury. He was on the injury report, but I think it was surprising to most people because this was an injury that kept him out, and then he came back last week and yeah, played in that I game. I was very surprised. And to, to no one's knowledge was you know he he 
finish that game to the best of my memory. Um, he was very limited. He, he was limited, yeah. but you know that's like as you as you progress back from the hamstring injury. And so all the limitations just seemed like normal, and he was going to be back to full strength. And then I was like, eh, he's actually inactive. He's not going to be there. So A.J. Dillon hopefully was not just on people's benches because of that news. Um, on the other side, oh, the, the, the ineptitude of the Packers was only slightly bested by the Raiders, who Fat Thor, a.k.a. Josh Jacobs, continues to plot along 20 for 69 yards and a touchdown. He did have a big 24-yard carry which kind of saved things for him, and he's involved in the passing game. So, look, he, he ended fine, up with it's a, a – It's a fine fantasy day. Yeah, 90 yards, a touchdown, five receptions. I mean, he had a, a really decent fantasy production. You yes. might not have thought he looked the best in this game, and, and honestly, against the Packers' run defense that hasn't been very stout, I think you would have expected more. But this game was – I mean, I, I think it was just really well said. It was a fart fest. <laughs> yes. Just absolute stinker. The, the offenses were bested by two middling defenses. I mean, the, the Packers have a good defense. The Raiders have a bad, just a straight-up bad defense. Like, the Raiders' defense is not middle of the pack. They're one of the defenses to target. Except last night, they were outstanding. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you got Max Crosby, who's a great player, but, like, they just were completely dominant. Uh, you're, you're right, they exposed Jordan Love, who's been – Good for fantasy every single week. This matchup looked like a one to target, but the game just really sucked. And I, I don't know, maybe maybe it was the the lack of any single offensive player on either side being able to explode and do dominant things. Like for instance, Devontae Adams. Yeah, speaking of targets. Decoy Adams. Devontae yes, Decoy Adams believe he had one target for one catch in the first half. He was he was out there on the field. Mike and I in oh, our man. champ 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 team, our our Dino Junior roster that we co managed together. Oh. I mean, we we basically already knew we were winning. Yeah, we needed about three points from, yeah, from about, Adams. About three points from Devontae Adams. No big deal. We went into halftime like ah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> this is we're not getting three. And it took it still took fourth if, quarter I think before we finally crossed the three point threshold and it still barely happened because Adams was four for 45 <sighs> mind blowing stuff not featuring Devonte Adams Jacob well, he's injured I mean I he it, I yes you could say that he's injured but especially that the um it wasn't it didn't turn into a big play maybe it was a third down but there was a route where he sold the go and then hit the brakes and ran an in. It was like a three yard in and just he roasted two DBs. And it was like the easiest pitch and catch of all time for Jimmy Garoppolo. Was, uh, I I don't know what we're doing here. But Jacoby Myers continues to have a great season, seven for seventy five with a score. He led the team by a lot with ten targets. Josh Jacobs was second with five. Yeah, I mean hopefully Adams is is uh gonna heal up. We did have a report that ESPN believes the Raiders will not trade Devontae Adams before the October 31st trade deadline. But, oh, man. Come on. Come on, Garoppolo. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not worried at all uh, about Devontae Adams. This is a guy who has been dominating, has a shoulder injury, um, you know, got the shot, got, got out there. You know, we saw this with Debo a couple weeks ago. When, when you're sure. injured and you're out there, that doesn't mean necessarily that you are who we're going to be targeting. His his routes to get open, well, of course they're going to be great. He's Devontae Adams. His shoulder isn't going to really get in the way of his routes, but they might not be trying to give him a lot of targets and a lot of hits. And um, you know, so the first read was probably more often Jacoby Myers, who's who's been pretty good this year. Yeah, Jacoby's been great. The Patriots sure could use him. Uh, do you have anything else you want to cover from this game? I'd like to take Gasex and move on. <laughs> All right, and, are you sure, Jay? Oh, you sure gosh. about that? <laughs> no, you sure no I'm that? not sure about that. Into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. <laughs> Farts of plenty, everybody. Here we go. <laughs> the Vikings plan to place wide receiver Justin Jefferson on injured reserve because of the hamstring injury he suffered in Sunday's loss. If he's on the IR, he is out at least four games. Yeah. Schefter, um, Schefter was like, hey, could be a lot more if the Vikings don't win games. 
Guess what the Vikings aren't going to do without Justin Jefferson. Oh, yeah. So there's that. We'll react to that in the waiver wire. But, hey, Dolphins running back Devon H.M. Oh, oh my, my boy. <laughs> He's expected to miss. Oh, this song is getting sadder. He's expected to miss multiple weeks with his knee injury suffered this past Sunday. Cool. He is getting a second opinion uh, to determine whether or not he needs to be on the IR. <laughs> oh, God. It's not season ending. Hmm. Well, great. Great, 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 great. So, well, guess who has those two players in the league of record, if you couldn't tell? That, I mean, losing Jefferson for... <laughs> Jason is headbutting his microphone. Losing Jefferson for four, at least four. That's devastating. Losing the the pickup of the year so far in HN for we, – we still don't know. This is the number one wide receiver going into the week. Yeah. This is the number three running back on the season. I don't remember a time ever in the history of fantasy football where basically two top three guys of the the number one wide receiver a top three running back went down the same week but here we are and I have both of them and it's it feels really good and um in addition to that uh they are well they didn't leave these games with injuries getting marked out of the games so on platforms don't worry guys they aren't eligible for your IR unless these guys get put on IR before waivers go through tomorrow, but they're now not going to do no, that. No, they're not going to do that. They're going to wait till Sunday. Yeah, they will. They will not force them onto IR. I mean, <laughs> I'm so angry. Okay, so here's look a little me yeah. a little a little vent time because I right. I need the floor is yours. I need to have let some it out cathartic action. I don't know what to do. So I am with. So you're listening here, Foot Clan. You, you probably lost guys. Maybe you lost James Conner. Uh, you're dealing with uh, whoever. There's a lot of injuries going around. I don't know exactly what to do. Our league of record is a keeper uh, league, so we care even more than just about this year. We care about the future. Mike and I both sold out last year. Yeah. Came into this year with no picks left. We had like two picks each by the seventh round. Um, thankfully, I got the championship last year. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, no, um, no, it's, it's fair. But I assumed I wouldn't be playing for this season with my lack of draft capital. And here I was, doing well. I've got the third most points in the league. I've lost Austin Eckler. I lost J.K. Dobbins. I lost his replacement, uh, Justice, Justice Hill. Now I've lost Justin Jefferson and Devon A-Chain. A-Chan. And I'm like, do I sell? Do I wait? I've got a losing record with the third most points in the league. I'm just struggling. But I have a saying in fantasy that is important for the Foot Clan because I don't care if you start 0-4, 0-5. You can make the playoffs. I'm going to get these stars back. You can always compete. So I say, no, never give up, never surrender. No. <laughs> Thank you, Tim Allen. So we we march on. We're going to get to the waiver wire section in a little bit. This is the craziest waiver wire week. Like there are there are four different teams where there are several players where you could take your shot at being right. And nothing this, is clear. Nothing is it's perfectly elaborate. clear. And so we're going to try to um make the most logical decisions, uh the highest probability bets and and help you order your waivers, but this is I'm in nine leagues right now. I need like a I need twelve hours to set my waivers this week. Also on the injury report, Cardinals running back James Conner is expected to miss multiple weeks with the knee injury he got versus the Bengals. He is possibly a candidate for the injured reserve. So that is a situation to monitor. The Cardinals immediately signed Tony Jones Jr., aka Tony Tony uh James or Brooks James Jones Jr. Thank you. Uh, so, so they they picked him up. We will be talking about Cardinals running backs and how we're looking at that situation. Dan Campbell says he feels quote pretty good. <laughs> that's it. is that how he said it? No, but that's how he that sounds it. just like Dan Campbell. <laughs> when, pretty good, pretty pretty good. Uh, about um, Amon Ross St. Brown playing, who has the abdomen injury, which that makes me feel good because I was. In the back of your head, when you when you see someone missing all the practices in the game with an abdomen, you feel like you're just you're mm -hmm. you're on a ticking clock of sports hernia. Sports surgery. hernia. Yeah. So if we are feeling pretty good that he's going to be back, 
yes, we we will take that news on this dark, dark Tuesday. Deshaun Watson remains day to day with the what the sources are saying is a rotator cuff contusion. He was medically cleared last week, so he's going to take his time. Um, make sure that uh, you know he doesn't jeopardize his already fully guaranteed contract. Um, and uh, we'll 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 see TBD. But I, this is horrific. It, it is. Wait, he's he has to play the 49ers this week. Yeah, I'm so pretty he, sure it's feeling real bad. Yes. Oh, ooh, oh, oh, it's still. I think it needs one more week. And sorry, then, coach. Yeah, sorry. at least I, one more. I just, man, I tried it. I really want to go. I just, I really want to get out there and play. But um, well, I just can't. It's just, just not right. Um, yeah, and so uh, he's coming out of the bye. He's got San Francisco the following week. The Indianapolis Colts. I this, think he's going to be feeling a lot better by that week. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you have ancillary pieces, you need them. If you've got Jerome Ford, if you've got um, yes. Amari Cooper, these are guys that if the rookie goes in behind them against San Francisco 49ers, it's a must bench all assets of the Browns. Like, I, I, I would – if you have to drop someone to waivers, not Cooper, but, like, you, you can't – get points with that backup against the Niners no uh Dorian Thompson Robinson looked way over his head in that matchup when he got the start Bills tight end Dalton Kincaid was placed in the concussion protocol on Monday being placed in on Monday you have to imagine that he will miss this uh upcoming weekend Thursday night football injury report estimated because they don't have an actual practice on Monday but estimated Travis Kelsey listed as a did not practice. Javante Williams with the quad was listed as limited. Okay. This is, uh, again, we'll talk about it when we get to tight ends, but Travis Kelsey, if you are a Travis Kelsey manager, you need to be looking at the waiver wire. You need to pick someone up to have a pivot. They, they play on Thursday. If The nice thing is if he plays on Thursday, pick, pick up your replacement now, and if he plays on Thursday, you'll be able to cut that player. Yes. That the the tight end you picked up and pick up another player heading into the weekend, so it's it's not going to be uh, too catastrophic. But uh, there is a good chance, despite him finishing the game, that he his ankle will swell up and sure. he won't be able to play on short notice Thursday. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. Put me in, coach. This week we have two teams on by. We got the Packers and the Steelers. Be ready though, because Week Seven is approaching. What are we gonna do without all those Packers and Steelers options, Mike? We're, now I don't have to play Najee. Or you're you're gonna take, you're gonna count your blessings that you don't have to start any of those guys. But Week Seven, six teams. So the apocalypse. It is it is approaching. You may want to hear this waiver wire and start being very proactive about next week because Bengals, Cowboys, Jets, Panthers, Texans, Titans all on the bye. That's going to be that's going to be fun. Uh IR players who are eligible to ret to return soon. Greg Dulcich, which is a name worth mentioning. I don't know, we should throw him into our tight end waiver wire as well. Yeah. That he is eligible to come back and look the the Broncos absolutely need him. Deontay Johnson who You know is, who the Broncos need? Who's that? Marvin freaking Mims. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? He's, he's maxed out, man. They can't score points. They have no explosive weapons on offense, and they've got this guy who has like five plays of 40 yards. He's got like 70-yard plays. He hasn't played more than 12 snaps in a game. 12 routes. Twelve. Yes, he hasn't ran more than 12 routes in a game. J Jason, do you understand how much energy it takes to run that fast? Like, you know, in a, in a video game when you're holding down your turbo button and your nitro just goes. Yeah. Well, he can only do 12 rounds. Okay. I, I apologize. Coach I Payton can't possibly use him more. It would not work out. Uh, but Deontay Johnson is eligible to return starting next week. He is an interesting trade for candidate. And Jamal Williams could be back for the Saints. Here we go. At the running back position, lots of injury situations to talk about. We're going to start off with the Chicago Bears. Khalil Herbert dealing with that high ankle sprain. He's going to miss a bunch of time. So we have Roshan Johnson, the fourth-round rookie, who has been playing a ton, has been rumored and whispered about pretty much every single weekend of this This is it. This is the time that he's going to surpass Khalil Herbert. 
He has not done that. But now he has an opportunity. However, he left last week's game with a concussion. So you, we are not even sure that Roshan Johnson will be playing. But you have Roshan Johnson. You have Deonta Foreman, who was a free agent pickup by the Chicago Bears. He has not been playing because he is not a special teams running back. Travis Homer is, but Homer also had his own injury on Sunday. So how are you looking at the Bears, Jason? We got a delightful matchup. You have a you have three pretty good matchups here for the Bears. Yeah. Minnesota, Las Vegas, both of those games at home, and then on the road against the Chargers. It's you there's value to extract here. It is a great run for one of these guys while Khalil Herbert misses time. Um, with a high ankle sprain, we've, we've brought this up several times. Uh, Edwin Porras uh, has, has mentioned this on his Twitter. The, the data says that usually you miss zero games with a high ankle sprain or you miss three. It, it basically, if it's going to keep you out, if it's going to uh, cause issues, three games is the timeline to get back on the field. I think that's what the situation is going to be here. That's how I'm approaching waivers is three missed games. And on top of that, when the guys come back, they always see a decline in performance. So this particular one, this this situation is like if Roshan Johnson plays well, I think this is the Chicago Bears' chance of of they can just say, well, you were around, you were playing well, so you're going to take the starter job. So I can definitely see that happening. He was uh, obviously playing ahead of Deonta Foreman. Um, if we knew that Roshan Johnson was active this week, I would push my chips towards his direction over Deonta Foreman. That being said. He left the game with a concussion yep. issue. If he goes, I have not seen if he is in protocol or not. Um, if anybody can find information on that, we'll 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 pay attention to that. Um, if he goes into protocol this year, pretty much if you go into protocol, you're going to miss a game. And so if he's missing, to me, Deonta Foreman, he, he is my number two pickup of the week at the running back position. Um, my number one from the Bears. So I I think that Deonta Foreman is a great pickup. You could be in a situation against Minnesota where you don't have Khalil Herbert and you don't have Roshan Johnson. Deonta Foreman will get you know whatever work there is to be had. Should be a great start, and if he performs well, I think you could see a situation where you see all the time in the NFL where the guy who is not even active for games, but he projects to be that first and second down role type of player. Like I think that's why Roshan has been active over Deonta Foreman is because the role they want. Roshan Johnson playing is that pass catching third down type of guy so I think that it is very realistic where Deontay Foreman goes out this week has a very good week the following week when Roshan clears protocol Deontay Foreman is in the Khalil Herbert role and they leave Roshan in okay. the Roshan role so I've got Deontay Foreman ahead of Roshan Johnson personally that's how I would do it both you and Andy Andy has done his his waivers from uh from his little uh vacation in the woods He's got his chips on Roshan Johnson. I think the the reason, if I may speak for you guys, is just you believe more in the talent. Yes, and you're wanting to bet on the player himself. Yes, uh, Deonta Foreman is far more available. Uh, we're seeing a roster percent of 14, where Roshan's about half of leagues. Uh, not taking into account, you know, inactive dead leagues. There's, I get it. There's a there's a strong chance that Roshan is not on your waiver, but he could be there. I think both of them are great ads. And look. Against Minnesota, with Minnesota not having Justin Jefferson, like they will not be the offense that they have been in the in past weeks. They will be a deteriorated version of that. Justice Hill from the Baltimore Ravens, he remains pretty available, and he just he gets work. It it is Gus Edwards is the number one guy. But no. No, did he no, not? No, he, uh, he overtook did him he this over, last He week. took the snaps back? He did. He I took missed the, that. He was the leader in snaps. Uh, so this is this is the situation with J.K. Dobbins. He was the guy I wanted uh, when the injury happened. Justice Hill? Or uh, Yes. You said J.K. Dobbins. Yeah, when, when J.K. Dobbins got injured. Gotcha. The guy that I wanted was Justice Hill. Personally, I wanted him over the Gus bus, both good players. But what we saw when J.K. Dobbins went down and what we saw in kind of preseason training camp was – Justice Hill was utilized a lot in this style of offense where they're passing a little bit more to the running back. And uh, then Justice Hill went down to his own injury. So we didn't get a chance to see it. He's worked his way back, and yet last game was the first time we saw him fully healthy, and he was the lead guy in that backfield. So this is a different situation because 
They're coming up against Tennessee and Detroit, two teams that you don't want to run on unless your name is Zach Moss and you're the greatest running back of all time. Of course. Um, but this is also a rest-of-season situation. J.K. Dobbins isn't coming back. You know, most of these other injuries, uh, you know, James Conner in the Arizona situation, uh, Khalil Herbert, like those guys are coming back. So I, I don't mind going – Justice Hill should not be on waivers. Agreed. And he's on waivers in almost 70% of leagues. So he's a full season-long pickup of someone that he's not going to win you a championship by himself. He's not the uh, going to get the footy award for waiver pickup of the season. But this is a guy who you can flex or play as your running back to probably every single week the rest of the year, and that is really valuable just sitting on waivers. I agree. Unfortunately, Tennessee and Detroit are next on the docket for the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. Not, 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 not the best matchup. All right, so let's talk about Arizona. James Conner expected to miss multiple weeks. You have Amari DiMarcato, who is available. In, look, rookie sensation. He is available in your league. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna. I'll put it that way. So Conner goes out week five. He is the next man up. He plays a whole bunch of snaps. Seventy-seven percent of snaps. Ten for forty-five with a touchdown, three targets. But we have the wild card of of. Uh, Keontae Ingram has been missing a few weeks here with a neck injury. He's not a good player. Keontae That's, that, that is my stance on Keontae Ingram. You've you've had that <laughs> stance for a long time. Uh, just because of what my eyeballs see. I'm sorry, Ingram. But I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not sorry. You're not a good player. Uh, but DiMarcato had some juice. I mean, he got it done when James Conner was out against the Bengals when the, in a game they're you know trying to come back. They get to play the Rams. The Seahawks and Baltimore. How are you approaching the Arizona running backs? And and let's also how aggressive are you? Let's go, go real quick. I'm sorry. Back to the Bears. How aggressive are you going to be going after Deonta Foreman if he, if he is your number two pickup this week? So this week is wild because this week there are six, seven, yeah, eight there's guys a lot of that you can. We have more. Could, we got to talk about that. You could take shots on. Oh yeah, this this section on running backs is going to be about. 12 more hours. Um, the uh, So I don't think I'm going to overpay on uh, – there isn't to me one guy that is like, I have to have him. I have to have Deonta Foreman, not DeMarcado. I have to have them, not Jeff Wilson, or not the, taking a shot on the, the, the Dolphins situation, or not Justice Hill. So I, I feel like personally I want to go out there and I want to get the cheaper option of – you know, I'll, I'll put out $15 bids – and I'll shotgun him around, okay. and I'll see who I get. Because I don't think that we can be brash enough to really order these guys perfectly. I, I would put Deontay Foreman personally ahead, so maybe I'll go a little bit more on that. Um, but also, there are teams that are just absolute in need. You have to have a start, and you have to have a start this week. Um, in it, The sad thing is, all these guys you're picking up, it's not a guarantee they're the starter. Like, even with Deontay right. Foreman, it could be Roshan. You could pick up Roshan as the more talented player, and he doesn't even play this week. Which Roshan, was, that was a Thursday night when the concussion happened, so he has had some extra time. You could pick up DeMarcado, going back to the Cardinals now, and it could be Keontae Ingram. I do not believe that Keontae Ingram will play. He's had a neck injury. It's kept him out a couple weeks. I don't think the injury to James Conner is going to heal his neck. I haven't heard any reports, and if you watch what the Cardinals did, they were immediate on picking up uh, Tony Jones. Uh, they, they went and signed uh, Tony Jones immediately because they knew they were going to be without Connor, and that says to me they probably knew they were going to be without Keontae. So I'm approaching it as if Keontae Ingram is not going to be active. He could be active and be the starter. It's, it's, it's also possible that Tony Jones is – running backs can come right off the street and just be put into first position. Tony Jones has been active this season, played in games. This isn't a player who's out of shape and needs to work his way back into, um, you know, football shape. So, personally, what I saw from DeMarcado last week, he knows the system, he played well in it, he scored a touchdown that was really mostly his doing. Um, you know, broke a tackle, hit the right hole, dove for the pylon, got in, it was a, a really nice play. I, I believe he will be the starter, and I think he'll get the majority of work. He's also been very involved in running routes he's been on the field on a lot of third downs 
Uh, he ran a route on a very nice 69% of dropbacks. That was the fourth highest among all running backs. So DeMarcado, I mean, you could make an argument. He's he's an undrafted free agent rookie. Uh, he's not a super talented player, but you could make an argument he's just as good a pickup as you know Deonta Foreman. Sure. Roshan, to me, is like your upside play. Because I, I think talent-wise of all these guys that are out there, he's actually – got the juice um but, but he's he, yep. i don't think he plays this week yep jaleel mclaughlin of the denver broncos he remains available in about half a leagues we've kind of meant, talked about him already of there is there is a chance that he, like there's a thursday night game is javante gonna go did mclaughlin work his way into actually getting some meaningful snaps tbd he was andy's number one pickup of the week Still? Yeah, McLaughlin okay. was the guy he, he really wanted. I mean, he showed the juice as well. He he looked like he had it. I think he plays his way into being a starter. But once Javante's back, I think you're going to have three running backs involved on a bad offense. The Miami part of the story. Devon Achan expected to miss multiple weeks, possibly going on to the IR. Raheem Mostert, of course, gets a bump up. But now what happens with the secondary players because there has been multiple Running backs playing for Miami every single week. Jeff Wilson Jr. on the IR to start the season. He is expected to be activated. Is he going to play this week? That remains to be determined. Then you have Savan Ahmed, and you also have uh, rookie Chris Brooks, which Brooks has been playing a little bit ahead of Ahmed. I believe that's also due to a special team situation. So how are you approaching the, the, the Dolphins? That, this one is the messiest but also has tremendous upside like if if Jeff Wilson's ready to go and it's him and Mostert we saw that last year where it would it was a little bit frustrating but cuz the guys would flip flop in value from week to week but that still was basically every the, every other week you were getting a solid game from from a player that's from the waiver wire so who are you looking at who are you prioritizing for the Dolphins? Yeah, for the Dolphins, I am prioritizing Jeff Wilson Jr. When when you say, "Oh, we 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 believe that this injury isn't season ending for Achan," it, I'm just waiting. You know, I know the news is going to come. They're going to put him on the IR, and then hopefully he's back. You know, in in five weeks, but that's not even a guarantee. Uh, they they have said they're opening up Jeff Wilson's window to return. This is a situation where. You you can't I don't I don't believe you can start the Dolphins running back two this week. Um, they very well might have fantasy points. You could luck your way into a situation, but it could be Ahmed, it could be Brooks, it could be Wilson if he is active. I think if Wilson is active for this game, they're not gonna. I mean, we've seen this already twice with the Dolphins. When when A Chain came back from his injury, he was buried he was not used in the game it wasn't until an injury ahead of him gave him one carry they slowly worked him back then when Ahmed came back from his injury they they left him as the th you know he was active for the game but they left him doing nothing I think he got like one carry so if Jeff Wilson is active I don't think they're coming and throwing him straight to the wolves and saying hey you're gonna get 15 opportunities this game but he is I think the best player um I think he's better than Ahmed uh, better than Brooks. We saw him last year in this system do very well. He had three uh, three weeks as a top 24 running back, and, and keep in mind he only played half the season for the Dolphins. Uh, he was traded to the Dolphins. All those games, Raheem Mostert was active for. So there is, there is fantasy gold to be had on this offense. Uh, I think some people have Jeff Wilson this week as like the clear number one pickup. I don't go that far. I think that once Ahmed is back, he what he did or uh, once uh, A Chan is back, what he did is going to come right back to you know surplant sur, surpassing uh, Jeff Wilson. A bunch of other guys to monitor. Should you not want to break the bank, or you already broke the bank and you can't really compete for these guys in Fab? Which this is a a a note. Always try. Always try to pick up players because there's a weird mm -hmm. mentality advice. that happens right around now every season where people, maybe they're fatigued from waivers. Maybe they're just like, I'm not going to get this guy. I'm not even going to bother putting in a in a bid. And then you somehow see Justice Hill get picked up for five fab yeah. or, or whatever. Weird things happen like this. They happen in our league. Happens in every happens league every year. I mean, you, you, you just go put a small bid on any of these guys you want. 
If you don't get them, whatever. Yeah. But I am always angry, angry when I go, what? This cow's picked up for, for $3? What yeah. did I do? Yes. So make sure you at least try. Worst thing that can happen is you don't get them. Or the best thing is you get a player for very cheap. But it is it is starting to become insurance season. Uh, I'm going to bring up Chuba Hubbard. He, I think he is actually a little bit more than an insurance back at this point. He takes on the Miami Dolphins next week. Miles Sanders, is it because he's hurt? Or is it because Miles Sanders is just not good enough or doesn't match the system? Maybe he's not good enough. But Chuba has looked like the superior running back for about a month now. Miles Sanders is still getting a bunch of snaps, but this is a situation where it could turn. Like I, I think that if things keep playing out how they are right now, there is a chance that Chuba is the one who is really in charge of this running back, uh, the running back room for Carolina, and then start stashing other people's backups, or if you want to start, if you're confident who the backup would be for your running back, now is the time to start thinking about those things like Rico Dowdle, Ronnie Rivers, uh, Tank Bigsby, if someone had gotten lost to their uh, patience with him, and Kendra Miller, too. Kendra, and you know what? Kendra Miller might not, not even be just an insurance back. He kind of had his best game so far as a pro. He is a rookie, the uh, the rookie for the New Orleans Saints, and he's it is Alvin Kamara's running back room, but Kendra Miller has some juice, and I think that he is worth a pickup. He gets to play Houston this week. Yeah, if if you didn't lose a running back and you're okay in those rooms right now, you will lose a running back. It will happen in the future. It happens to all of us. So the three guys that I'm targeting, uh, Kendra Miller, Tajay Spears, and Tank Bigsby. I like the rookies with talent behind stars because should that star go down, they get an opportunity and they're talented. Um, you know, you, you brought up, you know, the Rico Dowdle and Ronnie yep. Rivers. Those those guys could have the opportunity. I just don't think they're talented to really – dominate you know it, it, you know and become a league winning type of back they're just kind of oh good i've got to break glass in <laughs> right. case of emergency option all right quick break and we're back with the wide receivers wide receiver ads that we are looking at make sure you pay attention to the los angeles chargers wide receivers joshua palmer quentin johnston aka qj AKA huge, huge. huge. <laughs> we're gonna make it happen. Well, oh man, Andy can't stop us. <laughs> we're we're watching the game, and whenever Huge gets a target, <laughs> it's just fun to say. It's a good time. Uh, but look for them. They 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 are they are definitely on some waiver wire. Well, they they out there. they weren't picked up as much as they should have been this last week. Yeah, it was, I was strange. I was surprised to see that after waivers ran, they were like, you know, picked up in sixty percent of leagues. It's like, wait, what is forty percent of leagues doing now? After a bye week, they were probably dropped in some places that they were picked up. So certainly Palmer and Huge um, should be out there. And also, Foot Clan, know that we – so last year we came out with a tool on our website that has all of these waiver wire rankings, our fab ranges, um, our order, uh, individual. You can look at who I like better, who Mike likes better, who Andy likes better. And, you know, we're talking about so many players. You're not going to remember this if you're driving when you get home. Pull up the waiver rankings on the website, you know, on, on one half of your screen, your waivers on the other. Make it easy on yourself. So the number one wide receiver, I think it's probably still huge if he happens to be available. I I think it's Palmer. I have okay, switched of the to two. Palmer over over huge because I, I know he's a rookie. Uh, and, and coming out of a bye, sometimes we see that shift. That's where rookies have the extra week where they're kind of, game plan more into like okay let's let's let the the rookie show what he's got obviously a first round talent um supposed to be an heir apparent to Mike Williams Mike Williams went down got no problem going after huge uh, Quentin Johnston but he didn't earn anything through camp sure other than some reviews saying that he dropped the ball a lot he didn't earn anything through the first five weeks including a week where we saw him on the field. He had a drop again in that game on a deeper target. Hard, you know, not not entirely just a, a drop ski, but um, didn't reel in a, a good opportunity. He just hasn't proven to me that he can get it done. And I think Palmer, while his ceiling is not as high as Quentin Johnston, Palmer is a guy that I think you're going to be able to plug and play as like a you know a wide receiver three and get 10, 12 points you know regularly in fantasy. So I. I I think Palmer's probably okay. still my number one pickup. 
Another great pickup, Josh Downs, rookie wide receiver for the Indianapolis Colts. He's been having a very solid season to start. Just had his best game as a pro, 6 for 97. The Anthony, the injury to Anthony Richardson, while unfortunate, Gardner, it, it can be similar to the Carolina Panthers where, yes, Richardson is the future and will get better and better as a player, but much like Bryce Young and then, when, then we saw Andy Dalton come in and mm -hmm. then the pass catchers – we're getting better targets and better reads. Gardner is a more seasoned quarterback. He is not a running quarterback. I think that we're going to get a little bit of a boost here for Michael Pittman and a an okay one here for Josh Downs, who in the two games so far with Gardner is seeing about a 25% target share. Dude, Gardner's going to throw the ball so much more than Anthony Richardson. This last week, you had Josh Downs against Tennessee be a top 20 fantasy wide receiver when Gardner came in. The last time we saw Gardner there was week three when he had the full start. Do you know how many targets Josh Downs had that week? I do not. Twelve. Twelve targets, eight receptions. It, you know, they're bitty baby targets. He's the slot guy. He's not going to be uh, dominating down the field. But if you're in a PPR league, certainly he's a great pickup, uh, you know, at least for the next month. Anthony Richardson has a grade three uh, AC sprain, so he's probably going on IR. If not, he's going to miss three weeks plus. Um, you you could see him miss five, six weeks with this type of an injury. So Josh Downs is uh, a very, very good pickup. Kyle, the Borgogan is already declaring that Gardner is the cash quarterback of the week. Oh, yeah? for If you're playing on DraftKings. Uh, and DeMarcado, DeMarcado, I think, is 4,900. Yeah, he's probably a free square, too. All right. Minnesota, which, Jason, I, I hate to bring this up, but uh, we did have an ESPN reporter on the Pat McAfee show Quote, the Justin Jefferson injury is significant enough that there's some concern that even after four weeks on the IR, he won't be ready to come back. So let's talk about K.J. Osborne. Look, Jordan Addison, if somehow Jordan Addison is on your waiver wire, go get him. But If, if Jordan Addison's he, on your waiver wire, that's a that's a, that's a a fab dump. Sure, yeah, yeah, and I'm with that. We're, But I can't imagine that he is. So let's talk about K.J. Osborne, who is playing in front of Jordan Addison, the production does not match that, but the snaps are there and the routes are there. They get to take on the Chicago Bears. It ha I mean, it's going to be K.J. Osborne and Jordan Addison as the wide receiver one and wide receiver two. I think that T.J. Hawkinson is going to be the one that gets the biggest bump because you have Justin Jefferson, what, about a 30% target share? I mean, he's an elite player getting elite targets. So those have to go somewhere. How interested are you in... K.J. Osborne for this this run coming up. Uh, we got Chicago, San Francisco, Green Bay. Uh, I am surprisingly interested. Uh, you know, the look, I love Jordan Addison. This is going to be his opportunity to show that he is who we think he is as a top flight NFL wide receiver, just a guy that can um, be special. I believe he will, you know, surpass – uh, K.J. Osborne, he'll be the one, and K.J. Osborne will stay as the two. We saw a lot of opportunity last year from K.J. Osborne. Adam Thielen, you know, missed uh, some time. K.J. Osborne last season, disappointed. I, I Would you say that, you know, expectations for K.J. Osborne last season were not met? I Yes. I mean, towards the end of the year, he had a – in the last month, he had himself a run where he was the wide receiver two wide receiver 71 then 12 and 13 to finish out the year so that yeah he averaged it's there yeah uh last year the last month of the season he averaged about 90 yards and a half a touchdown a game in that last month so obviously we can see that but on the course of the season you look at the other 13 games he was piddly poop um they need him um, I, I think the way that this breaks down, if you just look at the Vikings holistically, KJ Osborne is going to get a bump. He's going to be a, he's going to be very similar to Joshua Palmer. Someone that's a reliable wide receiver three gets you about 10 points, hopefully on a week. Jordan Addison has the chance to become something special and really, um, take a major step forward. I think Alexander Madison is going to be more needed. They're not going to be able to throw the ball at the same pass rate over expectation without, Justin Jefferson, so you're going to see more volume there. And then, of course, congratulations if you have TJ Hawkinson. Because yeah. he's, he's going to have 10 targets a game at tight end, which is incredible. Is there any other wide receivers you really want to highlight for this 
waiver episode. I mean, Tyler Boyd, he was he was okay-ish. Seven targets, six for 39. We still don't know if T. Higgins will be playing next week. Tyler Boyd would be the name I would bring up. You, you can also throw in Trenton Irwin, um, wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals, who ended up with 10 targets, eight receptions. He's more like the Josh Downs, where you're only playing him in a PPR league where you're getting full points for those little – Piddly poop uh, reception. That's two piddly poops today. I'm going to make it three by the end of the show. Don't okay. you worry. Uh, Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd looked pretty good, and he did have a very, very nice touchdown in that game that if you're just box score hunting, you didn't see it got called back on a penalty that did not really affect anything that happened with Tyler Boyd, uh, but he looked good, beat a man, dove for the pylon, got in. Unfortunately, play didn't count. We'd be looking at him very differently if that flag wasn't thrown. Do you make anything of the last two weeks for Curtis Samuel, wide receiver from the Washington Manders? Jahan Dotson, massive disappointment, but in the last two weeks for Curtis, we got eight targets that turned into seven for 51 and a one-yard rushing touchdown. The past week against Chicago, six for sixty-five with a touchdown. No, nope, no, nope, not ch not, no? chase not chasing not chasing it. No, okay. because we we brought this up with regards to Terry McLaurin and Jordan Addison, better players than Curtis Samuel. Um, not that Curtis Samuel isn't a good player in his own right, but you have Logan Thomas, you have those other three wide receivers we just mentioned, and they threw the ball to what was it like eleven guys? Last week? It was yeah. it was insane. So if you're spreading it around that much, Curtis Samuel's had a good week in back-to-back -back weeks because he got a touchdown. And I feel like what you're doing, if you try to chase that, is you're just saying, oh, he gets touchdowns. I'm going to bet on a Curtis Samuel touchdown. If you go to DraftKings Sportsbook and look at like what is just the line for a Curtis Samuel touchdown, I bet you're going to get some, 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 juicy some juice on that because nice. it's not expected. Uh, the last name I will throw out just as a stash, like if you're looking at your roster and you're feeling really good about things, including uh, Bipocalypse coming up, Rasheed Rice of the Kansas City Chiefs, Denver, Chargers, Denver. That that is the upcoming schedule for the Kansas City Chiefs. No one has broke out for the wide receiver room. In fact, Rice saw his his snaps drop to thirty percent, where he was right around the fifty percent mark the past couple of weeks. So he has not secured his place as like the number one wide receiver. But when he's on the but, field, but I man. think there is a chance that over the next month or so things start to. Trend in his direction. That's I, it, it's. This is all just speculative. Yeah. the The unfortunate thing that we see with the Kansas City Chiefs, with Andy Reid, um, and with Mahomes, is that they have they have a bunch of packages. All of these wide receivers are playing snaps. This isn't one of those situations where it's like, here's our three starters, and then go play, and we're gonna figure out who gets the ball this play. This is who gets to play this play. And so it's very frustrating to rely on anyone, Kadarius Tony, MVS, Sky Moore, Rushy Rice. But Rushy Rice is a rookie who has looked good on the field, and those guys tend to get into more packages as time goes on. He is targeted on 34.8% of his routes this season. That is enormous. That yes. is tied with Tyreek Hill for the highest in the NFL. But he's just not on the field that much. So I, I would agree Rushy Rice is definitely worth a stash. And I, in League of Record, go ahead and look for Rushy Rice on the waivers this week because I'm going to have to drop people I don't want to drop. I'm making a note. Yeah, Rice, thank you. I don't have to look for it. Uh, at the tight end position, Logan Thomas, he's the number one pickup of the week at the tight end position. 11 targets, 9 for 77 with a touchdown. Gets to take on the Atlanta Falcons. He's not my number one. Oh, he's not? No. At the tight end position? At the tight end position, he's not. I'm Okay. Well, did you talk me into somebody? I was I was I was anti this player through most yeah. of the draft season. I'll uh swallow my pride and say that Cole Komet looks good out there. And if Justin Fields is gonna continue passing the ball well and he you know, the last two games, once sure was against Denver, but not both of them. Um, you know, the Washington Manders have a decent defense and Justin Fields went out and put up four passing touchdowns, but you look at are you talking about the the tight end three on the season? Yes, Cole the tight end, the tight end three on the season <laughs> who plays Minnesota, Las Vegas Raiders, the Los Angeles Chargers as the next three weeks. Um, you know that he can get in the end zone, and he's involved. You know, forty two yards this last week, eighty five yards the week before. Um, he, yeah, he would be the tight end I would be targeting. He's got a lot more left in the tank 
as an up-and-coming player than Logan Thomas does um, as an elder statesman. All right, fair. I'll, I'll take the targets from Logan Thomas. Uh, the doctor, a.k.a. Dalton Schultz of the Houston Texans, maybe he's waking up. I'm Doctor's going a lot of vacations, man. I'm not chasing it. I think this was his 7 for 65 with a touchdown was more of a product of – It's his the, best game of the year. Of the wide receivers. At not, the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm with you. So I'm not, I'm not chasing there. And How then, about Noah Gray? Do you pick up Noah Gray if you are the Kelsey manager in case Kelsey goes down? Uh, also, this is a name worth bringing up. Um, I don't. I, I think if Kelsey goes down, Noah Gray doesn't just become a week-in, week-out dominant force. I mean, we saw Noah Gray in week one without Travis Kelsey. He didn't dominate. He he did have the most targets at the tight end position and um, routes and, and was valuable, but he didn't get the touchdown that week. But it, this is, you know, Sunday mornings – you look for running back stashes. You know, some guy gets marked yep. out from your bench, you throw him on your IR, yep. and you just look for a backup that could have an injury ahead of him. You try to get ahead of the waivers. If there aren't those players on your waivers on a week-in, week-out basis going forward, Noah Gray is one of those guys you could try to play that in case something happened to Travis Kelsey like it did this last week. I'm, I, I would be fine playing and starting Noah Gray, especially this week against Denver. Sure. Like, would you rather... I mean, I'd probably rather grab Cole Komet personally than Noah Gray, but would you rather have Logan Thomas, your number one, over Noah Gray if you're the Travis Kelsey manager? I lean going Logan Thomas there, yeah. I just feel safer in some volume. Okay. But it, it not, a, not by a wide margin. At the DST position, the low rostered team out there that has a good matchup, it would be the Atlanta Falcons taking on the Washington Manders. If you're talking about higher percent rostered uh, teams, the Kansas City Chiefs, they have they're set up for a three team run here or three week run with Denver, the Chargers, and Denver, and and the, uh, look, the Jags, I guess the Jacksonville Jaguars, they get to take on the Colts and and Gardner. I actually have, think the Los Angeles Rams might be the pickup of the week. Okay, versus the Cardinals. Versus the Cardinals, they're at home. What we saw last week. Um, from the Cardinals offense they're, they're going to have to pass more which is good for Joshua Dobbs but also they're going to struggle that that means more opportunities for sacks more opportunities for interceptions the this the the locomotive that made this Cardinals offense work through the four, first four weeks was James Conner and we saw when he went out they struggled a little bit more on offense I think Joshua Dobbs can have a, a good game but I think the Rams at home have a really good chance to produce the things that produce in fantasy turnovers uh touchdowns um you know and they're they're two percent rostered so they're completely widely available again jason mentioned it but the full waiver rankings are available the fantasy footballers.com make sure you go check that out but let's talk quarterbacks full stream ahead my stream is matthew stafford <laughs> My stream of the week is Matthew Stafford against the Arizona Cardinals. Pretty, pretty sure I said it. Pretty you sure did. I claimed it first. You did. Uh, but the, the I had him in the dock, so that means that he is mine. He's on pace for almost 5,000 passing yards. The touchdowns just have not been there. I got a shocking thing for you, Jason. Okay. Cooper Cup comes back. Matthew Stafford finally throws two passing wow. touchdowns. In, <laughs> you I mean, you don't say. Incredible things happen when you have an elite player back on the field. Arizona is – it's a plus matchup. It's a super plus matchup. There's no one that hasn't had yes. a good game against the Cardinals this year, including Daniel Jones. Yes. it it It's strange because the Cardinals, like the narrative was they're going to be so bad, and then they weren't – Yeah, they're, the, they're they weren't better the than so, expected. But – But they still have no talent. But when you, when you look at the numbers, quarterback above expectation has been – Pretty good against the Arizona Cardinals. It is the best matchup through five weeks. So, Matt, Matty Stafford, uh, I'm going to take him as a streamer this week. Uh, I love it. My stream of the week is Matt, Matt Stafford, <laughs> his brother. Uh, look, I really do believe he is a phenomenal play this week. Um, th this is uh, a player who's probably going to finally throw three touchdowns this week. If I'm starting someone else, I think you could start Joshua Dobbs on the other side of the field in the same game. I think this has some sneaky upside in this matchup, uh, home in the Dome in L.A. But Brock Purdy, 
If he is still available on your waivers. I can't imagine he is. Yeah, he, just throwing his name out there because he shouldn't be on anybody's waivers. He's been unstoppable, and people might be afraid of the Cleveland Browns matchup. Goodness gracious, if if uh, you know if if Deshaun Watson isn't there, we saw this last time that that we saw the Browns. Their defense can't hold up the whole game when their offense can't stay on the field. That would really be true against the San Francisco 49ers. So uh, Brock Purdy should be picked up and played. I would go Stafford, Purdy, uh, Purdy, Purdy, uh, Purdy, <laughs> and then uh, Dobbs. <laughs> A little Purdy. Uh, that's going to do it for today's episode. Coming up the rest of the week tomorrow, we got Hungry for More, the Thursday night preview. Ooh, a fantasy draft redo. Ooh, those, those are fun. Those are fun, and those are very tough. And Andy will be here for that. Yep. And then Friday, we will have the Wheel of Shame. It is finally my turn to oh, spin the wheel. yeah, that's right. Yep. Well, you is. know what's funny it is, is um, this morning I was going to, uh, you know, I'm, I get to pick the outfit this week. I won. And um, I was going to talk to you about it because I, th I just oh. assumed it <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely forgot. We should. Let's have a conference about okay. it after this. That's going to do it for today's episode, everybody. Make sure you follow us all over the social media. FootClanGiveaway.com. That's going to be closing very soon. Good luck with your waivers. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.